Hello and uh, welcome to the Qubrid uh, training uh, channel. Today we will continue the introduction series about uh, Qubrid Manager with the third part of uh, the presentation uh, series. On today's agenda is to, to talk about uh, Qubrid triggers, uh, Qubrid store procedures and Qubrid OIDs, uh, Qubrid Unique Record Identifiers. Let's start, let's switch to Qubrid Manager. I have already uh, started my Qubit Manager client and the uh, uh, DemoDB uh, database is uh, up and running. I will assume that uh, you already know what Trigger is, uh, is all about and uh, how much uh, functionality and uh, enhanced features a Trigger is able to give uh, in your database. Uh, today we'll just take a look of and see how we can easily create a trigger um, using the, the features provided by uh, Qubit Manager client. But before we actually create a trigger, uh, let's make it clear uh, in Qubit there are two types of triggers. We have user triggers. These are uh, triggers which are at the user level, the, the database level and gets activated by event specific uh, for that user like a commit or a rollback and uh, on, on, uh, on another hand you have the table triggers these are triggers which are associated to a specific table in the database and today we will create together such a table uh, such a table trigger now I already have a test table in, in the DemoDB database. It's a very uh, simple table with just one column. Let's create together a trigger which will prevent um, inserts in this table when certain conditions occurred. So we select triggers, then create trigger. Let's select the table. Let's give a name to our trigger. Uh, let's keep the, the default condition so the event is insert, condition is before the insert actually takes place, the action will be to reject the insert and for the condition we'll have to specify something to refine when uh, this action will take place. If I would uh, just click OK now I would uh, create a trigger which would prevent any kind of inserts in our table and that's probably not what we really want. So let's, um, let's uh, specify a condition which, um, which is related to the current user. So let's say for example that if the current uh, user is the uh, DBA user, then uh, this trigger will, uh, will be activated and it will reject uh, the inserts. Remember, uh, on this tab you have access to the SQL code of the trigger because you can always create triggers from uh, any SQL command prompt, you don't necessarily uh, have to use the Qubit Manager client. Let's click OK. And yes, our trigger has been created successfully. Now let's test uh, this trigger. As you probably already noticed, we are connected as the DBA user to the demo DB database. So when we try to insert some data in our table, we would expect that the values will not actually be inserted due to the trigger. So let's just uh, verify this, set the values, insert, and yes. You can see the error message. The operation has been rejected by the trigger we have just created before. This was, of course, a very simple example of how to, to create a trigger. Uh, just take a look at the um, help that comes with Kubrid Manager or look on the kubrid.org uh, uh, website to find more information about how to use triggers. If you know how to use triggers, you'll be able to, to enhance the, uh, the functionalities of your, uh, of your database um, with so many more uh, things. Now let's uh, move to the next uh, topic on today's agenda, let's talk about store procedure. Now store procedure is a really uh, powerful uh, uh, topic to talk about. Not only that Qubit supports uh, store procedures, actually many um, databases uh, support store procedures, but Qubit supports Java store procedure. This means 
that not only you have uh, you get support for uh, store procedures in Kubernetes, but you have access to the power of the Java uh, language. It's not in, in uh, our uh, today's uh, agenda to, to explain details how to create uh, stock procedures. Remember, the help which comes with Kubernetes Manager uh, includes some uh, easy to follow examples on how to create such uh, Java uh, stock procedures and how to enable them in your Kubernetes uh, database. So please look at the online documentation you will be able to, to, to create uh, uh, such store procedures for your uh, Kubernetes database and you'll be able to call these uh, this store procedures from uh, SQL command prompt and also from your Java uh, programs through uh, the Java GDBC uh, uh, driver. I'm gonna mention only one thing for now. Uh, remember that uh, by default, support for Java stock procedure is not enabled, so you'll need to explicitly enable support for Java stock procedures if you want uh, uh, these uh, these features to 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 be available to be available in your uh, in your database. And now let's uh, move to the. Uh, last topic on today's agenda, uh, I want to, to tell you about the OIDs, the Kubrit Unique Record Identifiers. Let's run a simple query on our uh, test uh, table. And now, let's take a, a look at the SQL Query Editor toolbar. The last button you'll notice here is a button called Get OID uh, uh, Info. Before I show you how to use uh, this thing, uh, let's clarify what is this unique record identifier. So uh, the idea is this, that uh, each row, each record in a Kubernetes uh, database have such a unique identifier. So uh, basically if you know that record identifier, you can have access to that uh, row, to that, um, to that uh, record. Is a one-to-one -one relation be, uh, between a record, uh, a unique record identifier, and a certain record in your Kubernetes database. So, if you want to to get uh, access to see uh, the value which describes your your record, all you have to do, for example, when you run an SQL statement, you just activate this option, and now if you run again the select you will get this extra column. Now this is the value which uh, tells you for this record, this is the unique record identifier. Now uh, using this value, uh, you can get back to this record um, at the uh, database level. When you right click, you have access to an um, OID navigator or even easier, I can show you how it works by uh, right clicking in this column. See, for this value, I have uh, found the relation with this specific record in my uh, table. We'll not go into details on how uh, having this uh, unique record identifier value can help you with do uh, with accomplish various tasks in uh, in your database. This is a, a more advanced topic. I just wanted to show you how you can get um, access. Uh, to this uh, to this value. So remember, um, if you need this, just enable uh, this in your query um, editor. Now uh, this concludes our uh, today's uh, presentation. Um, we hope uh, uh, you learn some new interesting uh, things about uh, the Kubernetes Manager uh, client. Um, please join us for the next presentations about uh, Kubernetes uh, Manager to find uh, about uh, some more uh, interesting and very useful features which are implemented in, uh, in Kubernetes Manager. Thank you very much for your attention and have a nice day. Uh, bye bye.